Legends of lake monsters have been around for a very long time, with Loch Ness being perhaps the most well-known example. Ogopogo is another lake monster from Okanagan Lake in British Columbia, Canada, with a long history. In fact, the First Nation people of the area, who are one of the earliest known inhabitants of the area, have legends about the Ogopogo lake monster dating back to before the settlers came to America and Canada. These legends and stories add some credibility to the possible existence of the Ogopogo creature. Ogopogo has a much longer history than many lake monsters. Then there's this video. This video provides the most credible evidence I've seen of the existence of Ogopogo. Enjoy. Now, an ancient lake, a monster long thought to exist, finally caught on camera. What is it? I think it's a 120 foot fast moving serpentine snake. This is just the latest report of a monstrous creature in the lake. We've had multiple sightings here of two or three Ogopogo in Lake Okanagan. Perhaps there's more than one. A creature which for centuries has been known to and feared by local tribes people. Ogopogo is the English word for Nkhaka'itk. It means the sacred one of the water. The sighting has amazed and terrified locals. This experience has had a huge impact on our family. My son won't go swimming past the sandbar anymore, and I definitely am not going in the water. The first thought is, what is that? And then the second thought is, is that kid in danger? Canada, home to over 20% of the fresh water in the world. British Columbia is the land of lakes with over 20,000 of them. June 1st, 2019, on a hot summer's day, store owner Jim LaRock and his family head to the lake. Yeah, it was one o'clock in the afternoon, 30 degrees out Celsius. The water was like glass. Jim's son paddle boards when something horrific emerges from the water. All of a sudden I just heard the swooshing sound of something. And I thought my son was just on his paddleboard and something went right behind him. A huge and menacing presence is in the water just feet away. Eventually my son turns and he actually sees a flipper come out of the water and smash down in the water. And of course he starts booking it back on his, on his paddleboard. Yeah. His son just manages to get away, but Jim will never forget the vision of the creature estimated at 120 feet long. The underside of it was like white and then the outside was dark. Scientists are at a loss to explain what Jim saw. It's like one, two, three, like seven fins. And you can see something coming right up out of the water. I mean, it's so flat. There's no way this is the wind or a log. The first thought is, what is that? And then the second thought is, is that kid in danger? This huge lake stretching 80 miles dates back to the Ice Age, and the oldest known inhabitants are the Sayux people, who have inhabited the lake shore for many thousands of years. Their descendants, the West Bank First Nation, have long talked about the lake being home to a giant creature. Ogopogo exists in our stories, and we have a word for him. If he wasn't real and he didn't exist, we wouldn't have a word for him. We call it Nkhaka'it. It means the sacred one of the water. They believe Nkhaka'it is not a normal animal. He is a kind of animal god. Because he's so sacred, he doesn't show himself to just anybody. When you see things from another realm, it's a blessing. Local historian Bill Stachik believes the creature is a real animal, unknown to science. When I first moved to, to Kelowna a number of years ago, I was pretty skeptical about something being in the lake. But I had a sighting off the bridge in 1978. He took a photograph of what he believes is the creature's head. It was taken at 130 meters. Looking at it, you can actually see an eye and you can see the mouth here. Uh, it was ironic all the time I've spent on boats that here I'm sitting on my patio and I get a picture. We believe it is a predator. We believe that it feeds on fish. There's even been sightings that it could take a duck from the top of the water. 
Local scientist Raphael Nowick grew up around the lake and is determined to get to the bottom of what is in its depths. I've always had a natural curiosity for wanting to explore and learn more about Oakland Lake, especially because of its immense size and the fact that it has never been fully explored. And along with that obviously comes the topic of Ogopogo. He's heading to an area where a number of sightings have been made. Okay, so we're here at Squally Point where there are several underwater cave formations known to exist. So we're going to take a look at those and see this is one of the habitat that Ogopogo may, may live in. Now it launches a remotely operated underwater vehicle. Here we go. To explore the lake's cave-like formations. Just approaching what looks like a cave feature here. So this is a potential habitat. A large creature or an unknown creature may be able to hide in. A few years ago, I was doing an underwater investigation and I came across some interesting formations in the, on the bottom sediment which looked like a pattern of, of footprints. The footprints suggest that there may be an ambush predator that may walk along the lake floor and then push off, creating those indentations in the lake sediment. Large footprints on the lake floor seem bizarre, but similar giant dinosaur footprints were found in the mountains of Morrison, Colorado, where there was once a prehistoric sea. Scientists are still discovering on, on a yearly basis new species on the planet that have not been known about before, and I'm just open to exploring this mystery. Are these lake monsters Jurassic throwbacks? They've been around since before the dinosaurs. They look like they belong with the dinosaurs. And in a Chinese hospital, what has this man just laid? Looks like a huge white egg. So where in the world did that come from? In a lake in the Canadian wilderness, a young boy manages to escape from a giant water beast. Marine biologist Eric Hovland analyzes the footage and is reminded of a Jurassic giant known as a pleosaur and of a creature repeatedly sighted in Scotland, the Loch Ness Monster. Nessie comes to mind right away. Was that a pleosaur that lives in Loch Ness? Is there something similar in this lake? Savage pleosaurs ruled the Jurassic waters of Earth 65 million years ago. Some investigators speculate that Nessie is a pleosaur whose ancestors entered the loch from the sea. However, recent science and discoveries have shown us that perhaps it isn't a pleosaur. Scientists have been studying the DNA that they've collected from Loch Ness to find out what animals are living beneath the surface. That study by researchers from New Zealand examined traces of DNA in the lock. They found something they weren't expecting. They did find a lot of eel DNA. Earliest eels date back to over 100 million years ago, when some of the largest predators ever existed. Prehistoric eels evolved into at least 800 different species, some of them enormous. Some of those eels can grow close to 30 feet long. That could easily be mistaken for a monster. But the creature filmed by Jim in Canada would dwarf the largest known eel. Marine biologist Danny Washington considers if the footage shows another type of river monster known to inhabit Canadian waters. There have been a lot of eyewitness reports of eel-like fishes swimming through Canadian lakes, but what they're seeing might be a sturgeon. Lake sturgeon can grow to be quite large. These animals can easily be confused for a monster swimming through a lake. When swimming, the sturgeon's rigid spine often breaks the water in a similar way to what is seen in the footage. There have been some massive sturgeons discovered. For example, in China, they found a sturgeon that was half a ton. That's a thousand pounds. But no known sturgeon has ever come close to the 120-foot monster captured on camera. That's about the size of five sturgeons lined up all together. Whatever this monster is, some local people are now refusing to enter the water. Well, this experience has had a huge impact on our family. My son won't go swimming past the sandbar anymore, and I definitely am not going in the water. People are still continuing to report sightings. Just last year, there were three sightings in three weeks. Until we get a carcass or some DNA samples, 
we're not going to know exactly what it is. In my opinion, the video makes it clear that something was, or is, out there. Exactly what is still hard to say, but I think it's something more than just a large fish or a group of otters. If you watch the video of the creature swimming carefully, you can even see the flippers coming up out of the water then going back in as it swims. While I personally don't think the creature has any sort of spiritual properties, I think it's very likely there could be some other type of aquatic creature that we simply haven't identified yet. After all, we're finding new things in the oceans and lakes all the time.